just kind of begin to get on my heart. And I, I don't expect maybe this evening to bring a whole big bunch and maybe startle some of these older folks that's here tonight. Uh, but we got young folks coming up in this and we can better leave them an example and start them out the right way. I want to tell you that there are folks that God has blessed and talented. He has given unto them talents and skills, things that and He allows them to do. Uh, there's some folks that can sing. Some, uh, they, they seem like they can just remember Scripture. There's some that can just seem like that they, they're just different things that the Lord would give unto a man or a woman. I want to tell you, those things by themselves don't mean that you and I will make it. But we have to be faithful to the Lord. We have to, it's not enough to read the Word. And it's not enough to memorize the Word or to have a whole collection. I like to collect King James Bibles. Uh, but that's not enough. It's not enough to say, to say amen to the Word. But we've got to get it, read it, pray it, understand it, and when we get the understanding, then we've got to live it. We've got to walk it. We've got to show it. Day in and day out. In the good times, in the hard times, in the time of blessing, in the time of being tried. If the Word of God lives in us and we're faithful to His Word, we will do what the Word teaches us to do in that situation. Because then I'm faithful to the Word, I remain an honest man. Uh, my Word will be good because His Word is in me. He won't let me lie. He won't let me deceive. He won't let me speak down. He won't, let me, he won't allow me to work ill toward my neighbor, evil toward my fellow man. If I got an enemy, I'll find myself feeding that man. Uh, giving that man something to drink. I'll find myself showing kindness to those that aren't kind to me. If the word abides within me, I'm going to break his commandments. But Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. It does not mean that I pick out the part that I like, and I live that part. But the parts that I don't agree with, I'll leave those out and go on. No man has the authority to pick and choose from the Word of God. The Lord's Word and His commandments are what they are. Praise the Lord. And I know that in a time of the day where it's almost like it was way back in the Old Testament, every man seemed to be doing it according to what he seems good. But, but this is not running on what I think is good. Uh, this is just on what the Word says is good. What the Word of God teaches is right. That's right. What the Word says is wrong. Is wrong. But if I abide in him and he abides in me, I will be faithful unto him. Just move a little further along. If I'm faithful to his word, when his word speaks to my heart, I will obey him. When he teaches me what I need to do, if I am dwelling in him and his word is alive in me. I will do that that He asked for me to do. It is an easy thing. And, and maybe you've heard it before. Maybe you, you no doubt we'll hear it again. Uh, uh, at times that many folks, we, we get in a meeting and we feel like when we leave, the Lord ain't had His way. And uh, either outside or, or a day or so later or even sometimes rarely the next church service Somebody will get up and they will say, uh, the Lord, I feel like the Lord wanted me to do something. 
that meeting and I didn't do it. And I didn't obey him. And go on and take it as a right thing. But what is disobedience? What is unfaithfulness? What is the only thing that will keep a man or woman from eternal life? Praise the Lord. Whatever label we want to put on it, sin is still the only thing that will knock us out. A faithful one. To that reward. To be faithful means that even in the times of meagerness, in the hard times, the, the cold times, if you will, even in the time when it would cause a man to have to sacrifice what he wants, if the Word requires it, He will do what the Word says. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is there a way to live that God will hear my your prayer? Absolutely. But we've got to be faithful unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me bring this tonight the way that I felt today. I believe without a doubt God will heal the sick. Save the lost. He'll move in things that, that seem impossible to be done. I believe God can do it. And when man will walk away from the matter and say there's nothing that can be done, I still believe that God is able to do something. You believe tonight that God can do anything that we have need of? God can do anything you need if you can get Him to do it. And to get Him to do it, we've got to be faithful unto Him, not just inside these walls. In but in the life that we walk daily, whether we own the job or we're at the house or to and fro somewhere in between, we've got to keep the Word of God alive in mind and your life. God is not looking for someone that will serve Him on Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday only. He's not looking for one that will start just start praying when home heaven rolled around. Right. God will set one when there's a handful of people coming out and the services are dry like a cracked up ground in the summertime. That one that will come out and take their place and stay and work at their post even at time when sickness would be upon them. They would do as much as they physically are able to do because they love the Lord and they love His Word and they love the house of God. They're faithful unto Him. Let me ask you a question. How would it be in my whole life if God was as faithful to us as we are to Him? Mm. What would the church be like if everybody was like me? I don't say that in a boastful way. I say that in a self-examination kind of way. What kind of church would we have? You ask yourself that same question if everybody was as faithful as me. Does it leave me room to look up? Sure. Yeah. all. Now I'm going to just be honest with you tonight. I get tired. I get weary. I get weak. Come on. But I love the Lord. Uh, I love Him. And there's something about loving Him that will make you want to be faithful unto Him. Uh, Come on, children. There's some of us here, we say at the time we've seen old saints of God drag themselves up the steps to be here. Walk pew to pew just to get to their seat. We watch them roll in and roll out. But they love the Lord. Praise the Lord. Those in their times, that they were faithful when they didn't have a, a, a spare dollar. When, when the offering plate would roll around and, and they were a 
shame because they had nothing to put in it. And I'm not talking about some of us that are put back to Mexican money so we go out and eat after service. I'm talking about they didn't have anything to put in it. But what they did have, they put into the service. They put into the altar. They put into the house of God. They were faithful unto God. And when time the trouble rolled around, they could turn into God and cry out in the midnight air. And there was somebody on the other end of their prayer that would send out the Spirit and move in that need that they had. But they lived faithful unto God. The Word lived in them. There's too many that have put on church, on church night, whatever night yours might be. The rest of the week, they live how they want to live. Walk how they want to walk. Speak how they want to speak. Hand a word in the word. We would say, don't talk like that. Don't walk like that. Don't, don't even uh, hang around with things like that. Not that you and I are better, but that we are in a better way. And the better way doesn't mix with the bad way. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, that's what you will. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to talk to you just a little bit tonight. 20 chapter of 2 Kings. Give you a moment to catch up with me. A little of the old and a little of the new. We'll bring them both back to you. 20 chapter. In those days, was Hezekiah sick unto death? And the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord. Set thy house in order. For thou shalt die and not live. Then he, Hezekiah, turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. You think bad things don't come along? Sickness won't come along with good people? Hmm? Come on. I've seen good folks that sickness got on, and I've seen over here, I've seen others that got on. Blessed be the name of the Lord who always knows what is best. Here has a kindness of word from Isaiah. Surely you want the word from Isaiah, wouldn't you? Begins to tell him to set his house in order. I want you to understand when the Lord began to speak those words to Isaiah to tell him to set his house in order, he was not telling him to repent and get saved. He was telling him to set his affairs in order. Set up who's going to come behind him, who's going to inherit, what's going to wear, who's getting what. He wasn't saying make things right with God. Praise the Lord. Because this man turned his face to the wall and he began to ask the Lord to remember how he had walked before him. Evidently, the word of the Lord was alive to Hezekiah. Yeah. Evidently he loved the Lord. Yeah. Well, he began to say, Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth. What is the truth? His word. Yeah. The word of God is the truth. Yeah. And with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. We were about what we were. somebody else thinks about it. Hezekiah was doing that, then God saw it was right. And then he began to weep with his face to the wall. Anybody ever been up against the wall? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. When you 
get up against the wall and get to the place where he's at, you're not worried about how your brother lived. You know where that how sister was living and who talked about you. What you're concerned about is how you have been living before the Lord. Right. When you need God, you need Him. You don't need anything else. You're not looking to anybody else. You're looking to God. You got into a place where man can't help you. Right. You know, he was able to turn his face to the wall, pray to God, and then he began to weep sore. He, he, we say he bawled. Cried like a baby. It came to pass before Isaiah was gone out in the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Turn again to tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up under the house of the Lord. Yeah. Isaiah was going out. He wasn't in the room when Hezekiah prayed. Hezekiah more likely was praying all along. Him and that unseen presence of Almighty God Amen. in the room with him. Wow. And when he said he was all alone and, and death was coming upon him, let me tell you, children, if God sent the prophet to you and tells you that you're going to die and not live, except you are able to turn and ask the Lord, ask the Lord to remember the walk that you had before Him and how that you walked in the truth and you had a pure heart and you did the thing that pleased Him, you're going to die. Right. Come on, right. You begin to weep. Nobody else was around. God was there. Why was God there? Because that He had been faithful unto the Word of God. He'd been faithful unto God. He loved the truth of God's Word. Therefore God heard His prayer. Amen. Amen. Did He not ask what He would and He was given to Him? Right. We'll take a little bit further. I'll heal Him on the third day as to go up into the house of the Lord. Not only am I going to heal you, I'm going to let you go back to church. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I may get this sick. It's a bad that you just love to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. He's Lord, you don't, you don't miss what you got till it's gone. Amen. Amen. There come a time, my brother, my sister, time lasts. There come a day you want to be in this place with these people. You won't be able to. Not only did the Lord say, I'm going to heal you. Now tell him, and the Lord said, I will heal thee. That man was better than money in the bank. But he also said, I will ask. You couldn't run over that man with an elephant and kill him inside of 15 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was not an archer anywhere that could have taken him out in 15 years. Because God said, I will add to your age. There's a promise in the from the Lord. There's an assurance in the Word of God when He comes to you to tell you something. When you walk faithful before Him, you kept His Word. You loved Him. You showed Him not with your mouth, but your heart. There are many that will say, I love the Lord with their mouth and their heart. They're far away from God. But a man and woman that has a heart that's pleasing to the Lord, you walk up right before the Lord, you can touch God. And God will add to you and bless you in what you need. Yeah. Not only did He say that, He said, And I will deliver this thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David. Isaiah said, take along the figs. Say what you want to. But he began to make a poem. As the Lord gave him instruction and taught him how to make that medicine. Take along the figs and they took him laying on the wall and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me? You talk about getting God to move. You talk about getting an experience with the Lord. This man had lived a life. He had walked in a way that was pleasing unto God. Not only did he get his healing, not only did he get delivered for himself, he got delivered for the city, he got to go back to the house of the Lord, and then he said, What is the sign that the Lord will heal me and that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? The third day, and Isaiah said, This sign shall I have of the Lord. That the Lord will do the thing that He has spoken. 
Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or back 10 degrees? What's he talking about? He's talking about what you, you, we would call sunlight. But they use steps. Praise the Lord. And on that was a, a lines upon it. Praise the Lord. And each line was called a degree. And he, and he measured the time of day according to the sun. And as the sun would move, the line of the shadow would move. It would either move forward through the day. Come on now. Praise the Lord. And as it reached to the top and the sun began to pass over, then it would start to go back down the steps. So God said, you choose. You want a sign that I'm going to do this? You choose. Do you want it to go forward 10 degrees? Or do you want it to go backward 10 degrees? Some people say a degree was an hour. Some say a degree was half an hour. Some say 15 minutes. Praise the Lord. And Hezekiah answered, it is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. In other words, the sun's moving, we know that it's going to go that way. Nay, but let the shadow return backward 10 degrees. Yeah. God set the clock back. <laughs> right. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. Means something to be faithful unto the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Means something. I, I thought we live in a time of the day that people don't take that for nothing. We're grace, grace, grace. Live how you will. Do what you want. But brother, that's the time you're going to need God. You're going to need the Lord to move for you. And that's when it's going to pay you and you have been faithful unto the Lord.
Hallelujah. As wickedness grows in this nation, there'll be a time the benefits will be cut off unless you adhere to the commandments of men. children to do without. Your children won't have to do without if you be faithful to the Lord. And God can deal with the hearts of sinners and teach your children. Praise the Lord. Can I talk to you still of the We look at the time and the moment of victory when the Spirit is moving on the man or woman and we see the power of God and the anointing of God and then the victory that's moving in their life. That's great. That's wonderful. We need examples. But what about the life they live up to that point to get that to move in their life? Right. You don't sit around and just hope and get on with it. You don't sit around and wish that something would move. Right. But you get up and you be faithful in your altar and God will meet you in your altar. So it's not always that that God does in front of everybody. Hallelujah. But what did Jesus talk about when you go to pray? He said, go into your closet. Why? Because God wants the glory. He wants the glory. He don't want no man to know what you have to do. Hallelujah. Jesus, if He was in need, He wouldn't tell you. If He's hungry, He wouldn't tell you. He's got a father up there. He knew His father would provide for Him because He always did those things that were pleasing unto God. And if you and I will do those things that are pleasing unto God, man may fall out with you. The world may call you all manner of names. But in the time of God will be there for you. God will make a way for you if you let His Word live in you. Yeah. It's more than just saying it in this place. Uh, uh, it's keeping it out but Keeping His commandments on the other side of those doors. Uh, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Help me, Father, to be more faithful. Help me to be more faithful. Help me, Lord, to take you at your word. But help me to take in your word. Help me to receive your saints. As Jesus began to tell them in one place, to let these saints that I seek down in your ears. He was saying, listen to what I'm telling you. I'm giving you the keys to eternal life. I'm telling you what it takes to make it. Listen to my word. If you let it down inside your heart, the enemy can't take you out of there. Don't wear your Christianity on your shirt for you. Put it in your heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know what it is like to be in that moment of need. You know, there's times that there's things that we have time to pray about, we can really seek the Lord about. But sometimes you don't have time to go and start praying.
And I, I tell you, children, what we do sometimes, men may not recognize it, man may not call your name out, we may not get a plaque or a pat on the back, but there's not a thing that you've done for the Lord from your heart that is gone without His recognizing. There's not a thing that you do for Him that goes unnoticed. He might not always come right then and there when you need Him. He will be up for you. Preacher, do your best tonight. Do your best in my heart. We're glad to meet you and everybody this year. I want to encourage you to pray on, hold to God. No matter what, you hold on to the Lord. No matter what else you have to turn loose of, turn loose of. If, you, if, you, if it takes turn loose of that to keep God, let it go and hold to God. If you will hear you down the road far greater and better than what you have right now. Come on, brothers, you all brothers, mind the Lord. He that preach to us. Bring something, bring the word, feed the people. Come on, 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 come on,
No, no, they won't stay with the truth, God. We don't need them anyway. Come on. We need people on us to live that word. Right. Amen. Everybody go. Yeah. Yes. You won't make it to the city of God. No walk in the council that I've got this That's right. That's right. Uh, if you do, you won't go the same way you're going. End up in the same place you are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know what I've done in that yet? Right. What is the preacher of a few weeks ago? Five and eight and five. We're going to follow the need. Then we slide and we slide. You follow him, you lie. Right. right. Then Paul says, I want to fly, but now I see him. And I was blind one time to the truth. But now I see him. Now I see him. You can fly tonight. I'll see him. They go to this place. So they can get by. Well, they can get by. I don't want to just get by. Come on. I don't want Ronald to go somewhere I can get by. Uh -huh. I want to be in a place, John. Did I be afraid to have to do anything that I know not to do? Right. You call it the Holy Ghost of heaven. Right. Come on. Come on. Young Godly, man. Yes, he 
Yeah. 